Runaways London is an ambitious project that conceives how does one effectively find humanity for people who were written out of history. Flinching at the desertion of touch, I listened to the sound of another boy's murmured distress. He sounded like me, though I couldn't be sure. I sounded like me, though I couldn't be sure. Bruised flesh keeps its inventory of histories, of tactile trails, reversed, reverberating. While stripping out blades of grass, she prayed. Around her neck, the brass weighed like a promise ready to be broken. The sky, a whirlpool spinning out God's answer, run. Layla devised the plan, hair tied up, sleeves rolled up, her face like Moses after emerging from the ocean. Runaways London is a project that seeks to help flesh out the experiences of enslaved Blacks, particularly Africans, and bound servants coming over from South Asia to give them their voice to magnify and center their experiences as resistance from forced servitude. For this project, we had a resource pack that we got from Simon Newman and from the University of Glasgow that we had to like read through um, and see what parts of that research resonated. It was about the enslaved people in London and across the UK and the only proof we had of their existence was in these newspaper advertisements that would basically be calling for their return um, so they could be put back on auction essentially. Public Advertiser, 20th of November 1758 runaway two Negro girls and sisters named Jane Grey and Mariah Grey. Daily Advertiser, London, 14th September, 1743. A black Negro woman, about 19 years old, goes by the name of Sabina. Daily Quran, 24th of January, 1718. A Negro boy named James, age 15, went away from his master the 20th instant. Is supposed to be deluded away by some other blacks about Whitechapel, Ragfair, or Rotherhithe. They are Captain Barrett's property, and any person harboring or secreting them will be prosecuted for the same. Jane is short and well set, with the evil in her neck, and now very much swelled. With two letters on her breast and shoulder, made her escape out of the ship Hannah. Whoever brings him to the Jamaica Coffee House in Cornhill shall have 10 shillings reward. Whoever brings her to the late Mr. Neats on Lawrence Putney Hill shall have three guineas reward. Whoever will bring either of the above Negro girls to Captain Barrett near Shadwell Church or to John Fielding Esquire shall receive one guinea reward for each. The advertisements were calls for help in a certain sense, placed by slaveholders who were desperate to find where their enslaved domestic had run off to, their domestic that may be enslaved or bound. Uh, they wanted often for them to be returned. There was usually a fee paid to them. Enough actionless bodies floating in the ocean and it becomes one. Black buoyancies organizing like a wet calligraphy. Shipwood compasses, the after effect of grief. A specific motivation behind my poems has been to name the people, to give them back something which they had taken from them through the process of enslavement and also in the ways that they were written about in the adverts. 
most often their names weren't included, but they were referred to by what they looked like or who they belonged to. So I was interested in, in some way, returning to them a personhood which had been stripped. If she appears wanting of a name, refusing English, if she has a mark on her face belonging to her country, itself wanting of a name, forehead resembling flower, blooming, heading eastward still, escort back 40 shillings. One of the first stories that resonated was Sabina's story. Um, I remember specifically in her advertisement, it said that she had been deluded away by some blacks. And I found that very striking, the language of it. Of course, it, like all of the language and all the advertisements were quite violent in nature, just calling for the return of people who were essentially property. But it was just that that particular line really stuck out, stood out to me because I just found it alarming that it was made to seem like she was almost crazy for running away, for seeking out her freedom. But I think for me then what resonated and what clicked was the idea of community, the idea that there was a rich community of black people, of enslaved people who had sought out their freedom in London, who were there supporting one another. Song of brass horns is rich, dancing through my scalp. He shaved my coils, but they are growing. Black hands, black hands grasping music. Black eyes are wide-eyed. I rest my eyelids, listen to the swell of thudding drum, beating, beating. We are so many, grinning teeth, tightly packed but upright. Yellow glow kissing the cheeks of everything. It's important for Runaways London to tell these stories because the archive of slavery at best marginalizes the experiences of enslaved Africans and South Asians. At worst, erases their existence altogether. There were enslaved people living and working all over London, which helps people to understand that the idea of black history and one associated with slavery is not relegated just for a specific audience. It's everyone's history. It is, black history is London history. It is British history. I think it's important that the stories are told because in my experience and in my education, they haven't been told. And whilst there may not be a lot of information on the lives of these people as poets, I would hope that we are able to take that and we are able to imagine something which bears some relation or some closeness to the lives that they lived. It's really important that this project and this whole, you know, these poems, this research serves as a pointing for the UK to kind of confront the history. Mm -hmm.